Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, my name is Maria Barnes. I'm the president of Barnes Business Solutions and uh, the president of this chapter of Access User Groups, which is the lunchtime chapter. Today we are going to be talking about debugging techniques in Access. Hopefully you guys can see my screen here. It's got uh, a PowerPoint presentation up about debugging techniques. Uh, BBA code, which is behind the access forms or can be behind the access forms, has several different mechanisms that you can use to debug it. And depending upon what you're doing, what the application is, what your user base is, uh, whether or not you uh, make your code an executable code or release it as a normal access ACCDB or MDB if you're using the older format. What your personal preferences are, all of those things uh, come to bear when you decide what types of debugging you want to use. Uh, very basic debugging, pull up a uh, project list access database. And uh, if you've done any programming in VBA at all, I am sure you've seen something like this. Where you get a message like this. Uh, there's an error message of some kind. In this case, I just artificially invented one, a division by zero error. And um, you have the choice to uh, use debug or end. And if you choose end, then it just stops the VBA code uh, and, and goes uh, back to your form. If you choose debug, however, it will actually stop on your form and highlight the problem um, code and, and where the error occurred. And so you can take a look at it and see what's going on. So that's the, that's the kind of built-in error functionality of access if you don't do anything else yourself. However, um, there's much more uh, – looks like you can't read the slide very well. Okay. I can certainly take a look at that. Um, the Does that make it more readable for you? Let me know, Eric, if it doesn't. Um, I do want to pop back and forth to other um, sections here, too. So. Um, and not having it in slideshow view sometimes lets me do that easier because it doesn't take up the whole screen. Um, you might want to, if you've got this um, presentation and, and you only see part of the presentation, there is a full screen mode that you should be able to, to hit, and that sometimes makes it bigger. Okay, I'm glad you can see it better. Thank you for letting me know. If, if anyone else has any other problems, suddenly you can't hear me, something like that, please do comment like that, and we will try to keep an eye on that. Um, okay, so why do you want to use debugging? Well, you might want to just verify before you release your code to production that different pieces of your code are doing specific things. Um, you might want to verify that different variables hold uh, different, you know, correct information at specific points during your process, or you might want to test a brand new function. So those are, are good reasons to uh, use debugging and also to trap error messages that you don't foresee, but that might occur during your, um, the execution of your code. So I'm going to use a technique here, uh, or the basic technique here, to show you, uh, if you know, if you don't want to do this, and this is just going to continue, oh, so then you can hit end. Um, you could do some some basic error handling by enabling. 
some lines like this, where instead of uh, using access as built in, um, just stop on that error line, this on error lets you say that if access encounters an error at any point in this procedure, then go to this label called error hand. So it would go down to this label and then execute the message box here instead of popping up the message like it did uh, with access. And that then doesn't show the user your code. Um, in fact, if you've got your code compiled, then uh, they actually get um, not uh, that the the fact the the bit to go into code will will not be available. They'll just be able to choose end uh, when they get it, and they won't see the code if you have your code compiled. But but you usually don't want to show users your code, even if you don't have it compiled. You want to instead give a a error message of some kind. And I've seen people put other things besides just information about the error like who to contact or, or whatever in case they get an error. But um, so let's go ahead and try this out here and see what the difference is here. Just save that change and run this again. And this time um, we get this message, which comes from that message box. It says error, it gives the error number, and then it gives the description of the error. Now, you know, that doesn't tell you a lot more, uh, but it's it's handled differently than letting access do it yourself. Um, and I'll talk a little bit later on about um, how you can, you know, do even some fancier things uh, with error handling. So when you're doing error handling, let's go back to my PowerPoint here. Um, you can uh, insert something called a breakpoint. Uh, that is a intentional stop of the code that you want to break on. Um, and then you can also clear your breakpoints um, through the debug menu uh, and to clear all breakpoints or you can use control shift F9. So let's see how that works here. Let's say that we have this and uh, we are not actually going to have an error in this case. We're going to comment this out. But you want to see uh, what value x gets after you do something. And obviously, this is a very simple example. But if you want to see what uh, happens, um, or maybe you want to, maybe we want this one here. Let's, let's leave this one open. Uh, you know that this has an error in it, and you want to see what the value of certain other values are. So maybe you have something like y and z here instead, and that's causing an error, and you don't understand why. So before this executes, you want to um, see what the value of y and z are. Um, so you might put a breakpoint on this statement right here. Uh, so uh, again, to do that, you just click in the gray area beside the line that you want to break on. And then when you run that, it stops on there, not because there's an error, but because you have a breakpoint. And then you can examine your uh, variables, for example, by either hovering over them, like in this case, you see z is empty, y is empty, and you might realize, oh, I forgot to set them to whatever beforehand. Um, or you can use things like the immediate window, uh, which you can get to through uh, view immediate window if you don't see that. And you can either do things by typing in like a subroutine that's a public subroutine that you want to execute or you can query what things are so you could do uh, query y or uh, query and there's nothing in y but a zero value because it's actually um, has a dimension 
intentional dimension here and you haven't set it yet so the default uh, is zero in that case and then um, you know these these are y through z you can actually uh, set things to something so you could say something like x equals 4 and then if you go up here and hover over one of these you see that that has actually happened um, so you could go in and you could debug a routine that you had um, done you know perhaps you noticed several errors above the statement that you've broken on but you want to then go and before you make some changes you want to te uh, test out and say oh you know if I had set Y and Z properly then you know X would be another value so I want to go ahead and proceed with that so you might actually set the value to proceed with your test um, you can do other things, like if you wanted to skip over something, you can right-click on the line that you want, and you can set that to be the next statement. So that then moves the cursor down or the code uh, section down to that without actually executing that line or any other lines you know, that you are on. Uh, and then you can continue and you see like the function f5 here there's there's some hot keys involved in debugging as well um, and that goes on until you to, until you reach the next breakpoint and then the debug menu here can give you other options like you can clear all the breakpoints and that's actually not a bad idea to do uh, before you compile your code and uh, get ready for production. That way, if you've accidentally left any breakpoints in uh, your code, then that clears them out for you. Doing things like making an ACCDE can actually fail if you have breakpoints in there. Access will just, and it's not very good about telling you why, it just will not do it. It'll give you some bogus error message and, and not, not create the ACCDE. If you ever have that happen and you can't figure out why, you might try debug um, clear breakpoints. Um, and this toggle breakpoint or the F9 is just another way, you know, if you were on here and you um, did uh, F9, that would uh, put the breakpoint on just like uh, clicking in the uh, area on the left here in the gray does. Uh, some other uh, things we can do uh, with debugging you can use stepping through code you can step into routines you can step over or out of routines um, I showed you the set next uh, show next is something that you usually do from outside of a routine or for, from inside a routine to show you where you would go after that so let's see if I can demonstrate a couple of those things here got some other examples in here okay let's see all right so we're going to uh, use this particular function test and I'm going to demonstrate uh, how to uh, use some of these other things like uh, step into step over step out with that hopefully and I, I must say that I don't use those step functions very often myself when I'm debugging I tend to just use breakpoints uh, for example if I wanted to bug this to debug this function get ending I would typically put you know just set breakpoints and then I would run the function uh, but you can certainly use uh, those uh, step into etc so um, let's go ahead and set a breakpoint on this and let's run test and uh, so now I'm in test I see that this is supposed to display um, whatever the value of get ending is with a particular function here so if I wanted to step into that I would right click on it oh, that's wrong sorry you can use F8 or you can use step into okay and then when you do that what you find is that oops that actually entered that uh, function 
And then uh, if you wanted to do instead, just the difference here that went into there, if you wanted to do step over, then that would um, execute the function and then um, instead of going uh, into it and show you the function like it was uh, already done. So that had finished the function and then it stops on uh, what is uh, after that. Um, a, a better use of the step into, let's keep going here, would be, you know, maybe this was not right here, so you didn't know exactly where it was. So you would go step into and, oh, it would show you the function and then you could see, you know, what, what's the value? Did I get the correct value? You know, um, where am I at? Uh, am I going to have this case or am I going to have this case or, you know, what, which case is going to happen in this part? Or maybe I want to do something like, you know, just evaluate this and go down here and say question mark. That's going to be four. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm going to expect that this is the one I'm going to hit. And so let's just make sure. Let's continue until the breakpoint over here. Okay, great. So that that did happen, you know. And then what is get quarter ending before we start? It's 12 a.m. Well, after we're done, what is it there? Oh. I've got it set to the quarter ending date. Um, I have a question from Giorgio about whether I ever use conditional compilation. And, and no, I don't. I do know that you can do that. Uh, I have seen people use that successfully, but that is not something that I typically do. Um, that's um, something that if you're interested in, um, then we could um, uh, show that some other time. Uh, so I will make a note of that uh, uh, conditional comp compilation. And if you're interested in that, we can demo that in one of our future sessions. Because that certainly can be useful in some uh, cases. Someone else asked whether or not um, the function could get um, a, a uh, actual date value like a number sign uh, and yes uh, it certainly can uh, in this case uh, we can test that out we can do get ending instead of, like for access if you're uh, familiar with dates you will know that typically you get uh, a date setting more like this as opposed to something like SQL, whoops, here I am again, um, where you do um, the quotes around it. And, and I think the, the reality is in some cases, access will convert a string for you. In other cases, it will not. So in this case, it should be the same. Uh, quarter ending is the same. And the value here of date is the same when you're passing it a string. And that is because Access actually does a conversion for you from the string to a date because of the date type. But you could also pass in an actual date. Uh, for example, um, in this, uh, we could pass in a date uh, where we set a date here. We could do. equal to something like this um, and we should be able to oops we got a, a error on that oh because I've got again a typo do the, the same kind of thing with that. So if you actually had a date value in a table or something, 
then it would actually come in closer to this value than it would to the string value. So thank you for pointing that out. Uh, that can be very confusing. That's a, actually a common source of errors for people when they are uh, dealing with dates in Access is to um, maybe in, enclose them in quotes as opposed to number sign. And in, in, in some cases, like if you're in the middle of a query, uh, that's not the same thing. In SQL it is, but in Access it is not. Um, all right, uh, one other thing I think I didn't show is uh, if you are uh, in the middle of testing this and you have a breakpoint and you wanted to use um, the step out, that shows you uh, or executes the um, where it comes out of that and, and breaks where it comes out of the function. Um, and I, I don't know, you might use that, for example, if you um, had problems with a function in some cases and not others or something like that. Or maybe you wanted to double check that something was set properly afterwards. Um, like I said, I don't use the stepping functions all that often other than the, the one where you um, use and you, you set the next function statement like this. And, and I love it because, you know, I can rerun a test if I change something or something like that. Um, it's just, to me, it's very useful. Or if you know you have a problem and you want to fix it later, um, I, I use that more often than I use anything else. But we have all, all of these different possibilities. And again, you can get to them through the debug menu, you can get to them from the function keys, and some of them you can get to, uh, like these two, uh, by right-clicking. Uh, not, not all of them are available by right-clicking. But um, So those are the basic uh, maneuvering functions in VBA as far as stepping through code. Uh, we also have uh, an integrated development environment. And uh, using uh, these techniques here, you can uh, go and um, manipulate the, the code to see what's going on. Uh, so if you were in here, for example, and you wanted to see what, and, and this is true, I think, even if you are not in, I'm just going to stop this. Um, so even if you're just in code looking at code, you can use most of these to see what's going on. Um, so you can you can actually right click and and see definition like this, and that takes you to where that's defined. Um, or you can do um, click on it and you can do the um, F, uh, Shift F2, and that will do the same thing. And you know in this example, it, you can probably see that, but you know suppose that we're in this module here, you know um, it's it's a lot easier to get to it, you know, and and see what's going on. And you can you can do that also with um, global variables, uh, not just functions and subroutines. Um, so, and then if you're in here and you're taking a look at it and you want to go back to where you were then you can use control shift F2 to go back, or you can also go to last position, and it'll take you back to where you were looking at things um, originally. So both of those things I use a lot. Um, as I said, particularly when you've got multiple modules or forms that then call something in a module. Um, you know, if you were in one of these forms and you were calling a public um, function or store procedure of some kind and you wanted to take a look at it, uh, those two, uh, shift F2 and control shift F2 to go backwards um, are, are very um, much time savers. Um, you can also run a, a process with F2. So if you uh, were wanting to um, run something, uh, then you can use um, runs a procedure. Let's see. I don't know that that is going to get this, but maybe we'll see here. Uh, so if we do F5, yep, looks like it does run that. And I think that's actually more like 
like the same as that uh, to, to run or uh, just this one right here to run. So that's the same as F5 here. So that actually is running not this procedure, but this whole procedure here that you happen to be in. So if you're in this function and uh, you want to run it, then the F5, whoops, I think we'll do that. And maybe it depends upon, OK, that's for, for subroutines, not for functions. I forgot about that. So if you're in a subroutine, and you can actually be anywhere in the subroutine, and you hit the F5 or the um, arrow button or the run button with this error, uh, arrow, uh, then it runs the subroutine. Uh, sorry, got to be actually clicked in there. Um, but you can't do that with functions. For functions, you have to go down here and you have to do like something in the immediate window like this. And then run it from there. Um, and F8 um, steps into something line by line. Uh, so a little bit of difference there. So if you were in here and you were stepping into this, you could step into it, I think, here by this step into. Oh, OK, that is line by line. What's stepping into that process? OK, I'm not sure why that's not working. I thought that that would give you like a line by line kind of thing, you know, where it stops on each line. But there's something I'm not doing right about that. Um, I'll have to follow up on that. Again, it's not something I use typically. Um, then we can also get to what what can you see while you're debugging. And there's several different views of what you're doing that you can use. And I'm going to go ahead and put a break here again on this. So let me give you a different one instead here. Um, just because you're maybe tired of looking at this one. So I'm going to change this to do all That take whoops. I can't type. Can't take an actual date. Nope, it doesn't take an, a date. So I'm just going to change that up a little bit here to uh, show you something different. But um, let's say that you wanted to uh, go in here, and you know this one I can't see like that. So let's go to the definition. Here we go. Um, so let's see. We wanted to go in here, and we wanted to see something about this function. So I'm going to run this. And um, I'm in here. And let's say that I wanted to see uh, how I got here. OK. Then you can use, and again, I'm going to show you that some of the stuff is available on some of the, that looks like this, this section of, of uh, information is available on the view menu. Um, you can can view the call stack and you can do it through view call stack or you can use control L to do it. And so this shows you that we are here in this particular um, database in this particular module and in this particular function. And it was actually called from this particular um, sub, it happens to be a subroutine. But if you had called this from a form, say, you know, and you could had called the test subroutine, then you would see the form below that. So that would show you um, a, a stack, if you were, will, of how you got to this process. Or, you know, if you tripped an error at some point and you were looking at the error, you know, how did you get to this error? You know, maybe you don't trip this error when you come into it through one type of uh, form, 
but in from a different form you do get the error so that's uh, you know helpful in those cases and uh, let's see what else uh, we also have the immediate window which I've talked a lot about uh, that down here you can also get to the immediate window through again the view um, or through control G that control G opens it and closes it so you could Thought it closed it. Thought it toggled. Okay, maybe it doesn't toggle it on and off, it just turns it on. You have to actually X out of it. Uh, you can also use your locals window and your watch window. So the locals window. close immediate just so it doesn't get so um, complicated uh, but this is uh, you've probably seen something like this if you've used any other type of uh, uh, code environments a basically a snapshot of all your variables um, so you see that here we are in um, Monday of week and because this is a function the function has a value of date this shows you what that value is currently. You have also set up this particular variable and it has that listed. And then uh, usually, or depending upon um, what you're in, uh, this particular function doesn't have anything else. But if you were in, for example, a form, you could see what, what other variables and stuff were, were um, available in that form. So let me go ahead and demo that from this just so you can see how that might look okay so if you were looking at your locals window here me is actually the form at this point and so you can see in there all kind of values about this form. You know, what's the active control that we're on? It happens to be the, um, the subroutine behind the command. Um, it has uh, information, any kind of information that you can get to from that form is in here. So you could look at you know properties you could look at um, you know different uh, controls that you have in here uh, in the form you know what whatever and and take a look at what the values were you know as related to the routine that you were trying to debug so that can be a, a very helpful you know if you know specifically what they are and you want to look at XYZ then I find the um, the immediate window easier you can you know do things like question mark me dot and it'll pop up with the same types of things that you can see in the locals you know you could do active control dot name for example and see what that is so I tend to use that more often but if you're having trouble getting to something or finding something this locals can be a, a very effective way of doing that and then you can also put uh, or use a watch window. Yeah, let's see, did we have a um, oh, I don't have a control for each, uh, you know, a hotkey for either the locals or the watches window. Uh, but for the watches window, you can um, add to that um, a different expressions um, and and trying to to um, so you can like stop your code if you if something's true um, is true so for example if uh, you wanted to stop when x equals five um, then you could run this and I'm just gonna exit it here so we can show it again and I have no breakpoints set here, 
uh, but I'm going to go ahead and run it again. And I have a watch. It should show you here. Hmm. I'm sorry. When you set it to break when the value is true, <laughs> um, you can also just put add watch expressions without breaks. Um, you can break when the value changes, um, but if you wanted to just look at it periodically, um, the watches could be an area where you could just, um, you know, stop it yourself and then see what are all the values of these different expressions at this time. But, but I wanted to show you what it said when it's break when the value is true. So as soon as that became true, that x equaled 5, then it stopped your process. So that's um, another technique. Uh, I, I, again, I don't usually use that. I usually just tend to use the simpler things like uh, different breakpoints. But it, it could, if, if you're used to doing that and in certain situations, it could save you time um, and be a quicker way of doing things. So... Uh, just another technique. All right, so you can also use the debug object. Um, there are three pieces of that. Uh, even though stop is not technically part of debug, it's considered the same kind of thing. Um, and you can use those in your, your code. So you could do things like this. So, whoops, if I spell that right, let me just show you that one first. So, in this case, um, you know, this is a pretty simple case here, but I, I've used this a lot when I had, for example, different uh, properties or a loop of things, and I wasn't sure which property I wanted in a list of 10 or 20. Uh, I would do maybe a loop through the properties and use the debug print for each one and then run the routine. Um, and if you run the routine, why is that not working? Because it's a private. Um, Oops, I still have my watch on there. Oh, for your watches, you can delete the watch. Um, so here in the media window, oops, I actually have to print something. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's show you what happens when you do this. So. I just ran that, and then after the fact, you go back and check it. And let me clear this so it doesn't mess up. Sorry. You can actually see what's going on. You go back here to your immediate window, and it's printed out what the value of x was with this debug print statement. And then you've also got the Cert. Just go back to that here. Okay, um, and that one, okay, I think that one is 
where you put a, again, I don't use this one, where you put a value. Um, so then if it's false, then it stops on it, I believe. And then if it doesn't, then it, yeah, change that in the middle here. So the, the purpose of the assert is if, if you want something to show you essentially if if something uh, is if, if the value is false um, so so for example if you think that um, X should be 5 at this point if you add this statement in here then if it weren't 5 then it would stop here and show you the debug or assert a breakpoint essentially um, so, you know, it, again, if you were in the process of um, debugging something and you assumed that a value of something was something specific at a certain point, but stuff still wasn't working, you might use something like this uh, for um, something like that. Um, and then you can, um, you know, make sure and double check that, that you are getting the correct value at that point. All right, let's see what else we've got going on here. All right, error handling. Um, we've got uh, different things for error handling. Um, I want to go through the, the basics of it. Uh, we already talked a little bit about it in uh, the, the first example here where we had turn off some of these windows here to give us some more space where we demoed um, the what happened when access just traps it for you you can use the on error uh, statement to go to a specific area where you want to handle the area the error and display information about it there are certain cases where you don't want to uh, stop the error. For example, if you're doing something like um, deleting a temporary file, maybe you don't care if that file exists already. You just know that you want to write to it. And so therefore, if it exists, you want to get rid of it. You can use this kill statement to do so. And in this case, if this doesn't exist, I don't care because what I want to do is get rid of it. You could do other things. You could go and test to see if it was there. Um, and then if it, only if it was there, you could kill it. But that's more time consuming. It requires more code. So you can put this statement here on error resume next, which means even if this statement here fails, you can still go, your, your program still continues and goes on. So if you do something like that, you probably would want to put an error handler before that, and if you're doing other things before that. And then when you were done with the statement, which you didn't care if it failed, then you would want to again put the error handler into place. Also do things like clear an error um, if it exists so that you um, don't get that error number appearing you know falsely later on you get the correct error um, or you don't have something be um, interfering with it um, so it's a, it's a good idea to clear the error if you've got one um, and besides um, some just controlling the the on error and and going on to the next sometimes you want to have uh, different places where you have an error handler that does one thing uh, in certain conditions and then maybe later on you want to have instead of the same error handler you want to have it go to someplace else like um, I think they, okay, that's a different example. Um, for example, I've used that if you've got, maybe you want this error handler two, and you want error handler two, and you probably want um, an exit sub down here. 
want the error handler to to do something else. Maybe you want it to say a friendly message, like something like um, uh, file not found. Try this or something. You know, uh, something more user friendly than the access error codes that you would get with the error description. Or I've also used it in um, kind of a uh, a conditional formatting of, of, of sorts for the code. For example, I have um, used like on error, go to the uh, error handler too. I've used it uh, for doing stuff like uh, if I'm working with Excel, uh, the first thing I might normally do is um, try to get the object. basically gets you a um, handle to the Excel application. Well, if, if that airs out, if Excel is not already open, then I might do something down here like um, the um, create object. If if I trap an error, then I'm going to go and do something else. In, in other words, if this if executing this statement makes an error, then I want to do something else specific. I'm actually going to open the application and attach to that, um, and then you join back up and and do whatever you know down at the bottom. Um, if if that was the case, uh, so in, in in either case, you would um, either open or link to the currently open Excel application or open a brand new uh, case if you wanted to do something like that. Um, you can get a lot fancier with error handling. Um, you can do something like insert uh, or put in numbers here um, and those numbers become line numbers in your process and then if you do something like this um, I'm just going to change this here so I can demo that. Uh, maybe put a breakpoint in here. I don't have my window here. Sorry about that. Comment that out. Okay. So let's Okay. All right. So, <laughs> of course, I didn't stop on that. Um, let me stop on this one instead. Okay. Let's try that again. So here, I triggered the same error we were talking about before: one equals zero, uh, one divided by zero. And, but I was handling that here with the on error statement and gone down here and so here I have different things that I'm using. I'm using the name of the form which is project list. I'm putting um, the name of the subroutine. Um, I'm using error lines so if you hover over this 
ERL. I'm not being able to see that easily here. Let's go to the media window. See that ERL is the line of the error. Okay, so that is where the error occurred. We, we still have our error number and our error description like we get from Access. Um, so I'm actually going to, to um, and, and this is this is how I typically do error handling in, in a bigger application where you need a little bit more control. I'm going to show you what comes in here. So here I got the error number, which was 13, the error description, which is oddly enough type mismatch, um, which is a divide by er zero error. That's odd. Um, uh, so in, in this case, uh, I do a couple things. Um, I, I look at the error description because some of those can have uh, quotes, single quotes in them, and I'm going to replace those with double quotes. I'm actually going to make a SQL statement, and then I am going to run the SQL statement, which is an insert statement, to insert information about this error um, into an error log table, uh, the error number, the procedure that it um, was called from, let's see the values here, it's called from this procedure, um, what line number it was, what the message was, I'm going to use this function, get logon name, to see who had this error, exactly when they had this error, so I'm going to record that in this table, and you can see when I do that, it creates an entry in this table of error logs where uh, we just got this type, mess, uh, type mismatch here right now. Um, so this is today. Um, it recorded earlier the, the division by zero when, when I was looking at that um, and, and running that before I stepped through it. Um, and then another thing that I like to do is use um, this procedure, which is save clip to bit, and it takes um, the name of a path that you give it and I've actually I actually create a path uh, well part of the path is coded or I look it up in some values um, uh, of an error image directory and then I build um, the time into it and who did it um, so it ends up with a a variable or a um, a picture with with a date and a timestamp and um, who who put it there um, so it's easier to find um, connecting the name of this um, picture with uh, the uh, value here that you have in your table um, and this save clip to bit function which I'll just show you here um, is something that I got do proper acknowledgments here um, from I got I googled it and got it but I've been using it um, it basically does a screen print and saves that screen print um, to the file that name that you give it um, so I'm going to let that go ahead and and run and before I do it I'm going to put it back up here because you know you you what you want the screen to print is where your user was, what data did they have on their screen, you know, um, when when you're running it. So let's see if I'm going to hit F5 and continue here. Okay, and then that may, okay, and then, and then the last thing I did in there was display an, an error message. And um, let's see if I can get back here. Um, yeah, let's see if I use my last function here. No, because I have to pop up up. Probably can't do anything here. Um, but I displayed an, an error message, and I have that error message um, sent to a value. 
And, um, you know, you can put things, if you've got a small user application, you can put your name and phone number in here to call or email or something like that. Um, or you can put a generic information. You know, uh, in this case, I don't want the user to know for security purposes what the line number, what the procedure was that the error occurs. I just want them to know that we're, we're notified of it and we're taking care of it. Um, so it's a generic message, which is a little more secure, um, but it still told them, you know, to to make sure that that we were um, wanting to be uh, sure that they had saved their information. So yeah, I can go to the last uh, message. So here I've got the message box, which is a text box, uh, just or a text um, constant that um, is displayed to the user. Um, so then we can go and see that I have the that error image directory. I have this error or screen print that was taken. Um, well, we've got this. This just shows <laughs> this function, uh, but you know what we're, oh, I know what we got. We got a double thing going on here. There we go. Um, so something like this where we've got, and we can see then what, what they've got. Um, and, and because I usually use this information and this you know, you could just go in here and periodically quiz your error log and see what's in there. Usually I have this attached to a SQL statement or to a SQL table and I have a trigger on the table and it actually emails me. I've seen people put email techniques in their access database and you could certainly do that as well. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of different ways that you can get notice of errors. But then you don't just have to rely on the users reporting errors. You get messages, and so you can be proactive about what you're doing. So anyway, um, that is about it here. Um, upcoming sessions. We've got November 28th. We have a guest speaker talking about uh, interpreting the LACDB locking file and how to use that to find out who has got access open and some other information uh, about that. Uh, then in December, I'm going to be talking about how to secure your access application. Right now in January, I've scheduled to talk about queries. And I want to leave you with some helpful links here. I will publish this uh, presentation, the PowerPoint part of it, uh, online on the blog for the um, Access Lunchtime group uh, so that you'll be able to get these links from that. Um, FMS uh, has uh, some nice links. It has uh, links about what all the, uh, or the, about how to debug. That's where some of the information from today was, was taken. It's also got a very nice um, link to what all the error numbers and um, uh, descriptions and what they mean and and they are a little bit different per version like if you're in uh, 2010 versus 2013 there's some difference in that so they actually have that separated out by version um, and then they also have some great VBA coding tools and those can do things like um, I showed you the line numbers here they have ones that you can use to insert line numbers in in your whole. You can actually like right click on your project and insert line numbers everywhere. So I typically don't have line numbers in my debug version or my development version. And then when I get ready to roll to production, I'll put line numbers in using their tools. Um, they have some other tools that do things like um, you can actually put error handlers in uh, all your routines, some, some basic like on error and error handle with message in. in. Um, you can do things like clear breakpoints or clear debug code through a couple of their other utilities. So that's, that's a great place uh, to look. Um, I'm going to open up 
I know we're kind of out of time here, but I'll open up if I can for the audience. So I've unmuted you if you have specific questions. I do notice somebody says, uh, will uh, I be sharing the procedures in the database? Um, I can certainly uh, put up the, the different error handling processes and um, the, the code about the, the clip to bit. I can put those also in um, uh, probably a separate link than the, the PDF, but, but I'll try to do that in the blog as well. Uh, and of course the video will be posted. It's sometimes a couple days before today's video will get posted. Um, do I take a different approach in handling errors in class modules? A little bit, but mostly from the standpoint uh, well, a couple things I do different in class modules. One is that instead of doing something like the form name, um, I will have the, the class module name in the error message. And then a lot of times I will also return some value that indicates that there's an error or something like that um, in the class modules, much like you would do if you were calling a SQL storage procedure and testing for a return code of zero, which would mean no error versus other error codes. Um, so, but did that did that uh, answer your question? I still don't see that you guys are unmuted. I don't know why did that not work. Didn't work. I'll try to unmute you. Maybe you muted yourself. Sorry. Um, but does anyone else have any questions about today's presentation? Bill, I think you have voice if you wanted to do that instead of type. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. Well, if no other questions, I thank you very much for joining us today and hope you learned at least one useful thing for um, technique for debugging in Microsoft Access. Thank you very much.